Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sheep Get Sheared podcast. I'm your host, Austin Creed. My friends, we're going to return to the idea of unraveling the realities of the world. We're going to go back to this, and we, we discuss these kind of topics all the time on this show. So if you've never heard the show before, just know we're not discussing anything that's completely untouched. But you know what? I can't seem to stop hearing. I can't seem to stop hearing this idea of the Matrix, that we're living in the Matrix, this whole thing. It started with Andrew Tate, and my, um, from my understanding, he was the first one to really bring this into the collective conversation, that I even hear my normie professors talking about it now, They talk about it, not even in philosophy class. It could be in research class, could be in my philosophy class, or whatever, they talk about this concept. And anybody who's read Rene Descartes, uh, they'll immediately start thinking, oh my, is this real? I don't, I don't know if anything is real. Is everything fake? Is this fake? Like they go through this whole phase of thinking that nothing is real and nothing matters, you know? But you know what? We're gonna really break this down. I think this is a very important cultural concept that's gone very mainstream with this idea of, are you living in the matrix? Well, first we need to identify, well, what is the matrix? Well, we can go to the traditional definition of the 1999 film that really brought this whole idea to the big picture screen. And the whole thing was based off of their life was a simulation. And you had to find a way either to accept it or to, if you wanted to, you could escape. That's where this whole notion of, blue pill and red pill came from it's a reference to the matrix a lot of you will probably already know this some of you might not have heard this before and that's totally fine we're gonna break this all down so going back to the matrix there was this character the first person to escape his name was morpheus so if we go look at this the, the traditional definition of the matrix when we go to science fiction is an alternative, it's a, a controlled environment or a situation in which people behave in ways that conform to predetermined roles. So that's the slang definition of this film, The Matrix, okay? So this concept came from this movie, which has now become a concept of pop culture, whether it be in sci-fi shows, whether it be in even philosophical conversations so many people are talking about this idea now you could say it's silly it's escapism uh they like i said before they read about rene descartes one time his decept deceiving demon philosophy you know philosophy all this kind of stuff and you wouldn't be wrong to say that but i think it goes deeper than this and as an author myself of the of Biblical Bachelor and as someone who's working on his own fantasy series currently, I believe that words hold tremendous power. And so when people use certain names or certain reference, references to events or places, I believe them to be very important. Now, the reference I would like to show you is that of Morpheus. So Morpheus in The Matrix was the first guy to escape The Matrix. The first person to get out of this fake simulation. Well, Mor when I first saw the name Morpheus, I said, wait a minute, that's a reference to Greek mythology. So I looked it up to make sure, and I was right. In Greek mythology, Morpheus was the god of dreams and nightmares. Very interesting, isn't it? Kind of ties into the blue pill and the red pill concept. Blue pill being... I want to believe in the fantasy, I want to stay, live in a lie, or the red being, I'm going to accept the nightmare, but at least I'm rooted in reality. So this kind of ties into Greek mythology. Again, going back to, there is tremendous meaning within names, places, events, and all that that is mentioned in, in literature. So who was Morpheus in Greek mythology? Well, he was the leader of the ones who gave dreams to the gods and the kings and 
They shaped and formed dreams and made him a messenger of the gods, so to speak. He was able to communicate divine messages to sleeping mortals in human form. So I noticed recently that Disney Plus has come out with a new series about Percy Jackson. I grew up reading the Percy Jackson books, okay? And one of the things that's interesting about Percy Jackson is this concept of dreams fueling adventures and the importance of dreams. So when we go back to this idea of the Matrix and even the mention of the name Morpheus, of his ability to shape and form dreams to sleeping mortals and to gods alike, it ties into this whole idea of us not understanding our own reality, us not comprehending the system we live in. Because let's make no mistake about it. We could talk about science fiction all day if we want to do so, but here's the interesting part. We'll tie this back into reality. The Matrix is an analogy for the system. The cultural system that we are all born into based upon the country we live in. Okay? And so when in America, for example, and we'll bring up a we'll bring up how this actively plays out in a second using Rick and Morty, a little clip from Rick and Morty. But it's very interesting when you look at the system. The system is not designed to really allow you or incentivize you to be free. The system pushes conformity, pushes you to accept a role, take a number like you're in a deli shop in the 1990s, and go on and move on and say, you know what? I have my role, I'm gonna do my job, I'm gonna sit in my cubicle, I'm gonna live my little life, and then I'm gonna train the person who's going to take my place, and then I'm gonna take a dirt nap and move on. That's what the system wants you to do. The system wants you to just can give and be a cog in a giant machine, okay? The problem then lies within, well, we as humans, naturally, we want freedom. We want the ability to decide our own fate. There's a great line from Pirates of the Caribbean. I make a lot of references to a lot of movies. I get that. But it's to prove a point. In Pirates of the Caribbean, and I can't believe the scene was deleted, but there's a line between William Turner and Davy Jones where they're playing a game of liar's dice. So they're bluffing, they're making wagers, and they're betting. Dangerous habit to get into, but nevertheless, everybody has a vice. And there's this line of, they're calling on you know, three twos, four sixes, whatever, and they're reading each other. They're looking in the eyes of the other person in the competition, and they're trying to get a read on them so they can understand what they're going to do, how they're going to act. Are they lying? Are they telling the truth? Are they exaggerating? How can I get one over on them? And between this exchange between Will Turner and Davy Jones, there's a line that stands out in that little exchange they have. Two to be in particular, but there's one that relates to our conversation we're having right now. And it's, he's sitting down and he, so, if you, now I haven't seen the whole franchise of Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't know how you haven't, but to, I'm not even going to mention the little spoiler alert, forget that, that movie's been out for over 10 years. But, there's this exchange between Will Turner and Davy Jones where he says, you're a desperate man. You know, what is the cause? It has to be a woman. He's referring to Elizabeth. Not no, and Turner not knowing that Davy Jones has this whole thing about the women in his life. And then one thing leads to another and he says, you know, you believe your fate is to be married. But you, your fate is to be married to this ship, says Davy Jones. And then Turner says, I choose my own fate. And then Davy Jones, with like the most sarcastic phrase ever, he's like, well, then it wouldn't be fate, would it? It's a very interesting way to look at it. Almost like a, well, I've heard this garbage before. You know, you don't make your own fate. It's a very interesting conversation because it kind of ties into, again, the Matrix. People have dreams. People have aspirations. And we like to think that we form our own will. We can conform things to our will. And I firmly believe you can. But it is not free. It is not easy. And it is not something that comes without 
some blood, sweat, and tears. There is a sacrifice. There is a debt that must be paid to society to then allow you to become free. You must buy your freedom. And we're going to really tie into the system. So the, the system, when I talk about the system, I mean the education system, our entertainment system, how the government operates, um, even how your family, if you're religious, if you're not religious, all these tie in to what job, what profession, what your preferences are. All these things are the government's business. Now you might ask me, well, Austin, how is this built? You act as if all this is structured out. That's not possible. Oh, it is. In fact, it's so possible that you can literally put it in an animated TV show. In fact, I'm going to fair use Adult Swim for a minute and 45 seconds. We'll break this down. I have to break this down in increments. I can't play the whole thing. I'm going to get a copyright strike. Okay? So if, if I end up posting this and you don't see the clip, it's because it got copyrighted. But I'll do my best so we can get through this. I'm going to fair use this video of... Rick and Beth. So Beth is Rick's daughter. Rick is the smartest man in the universe. They haven't seen Rick and Morty. I don't know who. I don't know how you. You must be living in a ranch somewhere and not have any idea of what's going on in the world today. But you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about this building of of a society and we're gonna break it down. Let's get into it. Okay, so if we divert the lawyer pipeline here, they should avoid the ethics tube and come out spineless enough to do their job. Right. Wait, why are the athletes going through the introvert sector? Obviously, so they can bully the mathematicians and give us astronomers. God, you are such a space nerd. I'm not okay, I'm going to pause right there. You see how this is all calculated? The bullying, the... it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be lighthearted. I get that. But you know what's interesting is these are all things that can be done. These are all things that you think are arbitrary, but it's not arbitrary. It just seems that way because you're not following the bouncing ball. Again, I'm not saying that the government controls everything all the time. Is it possible as someone who's worked for the federal government and had a top secret clearance, you'd be surprised at things the government's capable of. I'll leave it at that. I don't want, I don't want the uh, FBI to break down my door. So nonetheless, we're going to keep going on this. Not a nerd. We're raising a society here, Beth. If we want them to be self-sufficient, they need to get out into space. Birth cycle coming. We got you, guy, guy. Shoot them hard and up the middle. So you see this? Again, I got to pause it for very use purposes. It's very interesting when you look at how they look at a society. So they're... Obviously, these are like stone clay people, but let's look at it, pretend it looks like this. This is what Brave New World, Aldous Huxley kind of wrote about, where this idea of a society is built from the ground up. They have to educate people. They have to inform them of what their purpose is. Then they have to put them to work so that the system can check and re can keep continuing and eventually become self-sufficient. That is the goal here. And society... In the West and in the East, every society has some shade of exactly what they are portraying here. Everything is similar to what we are seeing on the screen. They And this will go further and further, but I really wanted to preface this and tell you that this is how societies operate, but it doesn't. it's not as obvious as this. This is a very obvious example of, oh, they're giving them vaccines, they're, they're doing the public health, they're raising them, they're funneling them into education they're giving them selective entertainment through advertising and all this stuff this is all part and parcel of the overall machine that then you will become a cog in hold plot wait go hold on go back go back i, I want to repeat that i want to show you so look see this if you're not watching on the screen if you're not watching and you're listening to the podcast they have them almost shoot down like this almost pinball type machine. And in the middle, they have flat earthers, round earthers, and then middle earth as like a jest to Tolkien, I can assume. But again, they split them all up. Why? Because they want controlled opposition. They need the discord. They need people, they need to sow chaos so that then instead of rebelling against the system, they rebel against each other. How does that play out when we look at the world today? 
Now you ask yourself that question. Why do you think there's Democrat Republican? Why do you think that we have the system we have? Answer, because it gets you to fight your neighbor and not you to fight the system. You see how that works? It's very interesting when you break this all down. We got again, I'm pausing it again. Laborer, scientist, interns, medic, they have these pipelines, and obviously it's very obvious here. It's supposed to be a, a jest of like, oh, this wouldn't actually happen, you know, whatever. But when you look at it, this is an analogy for what the world actually looks like. It's supposed to be satire for what the world actually is, which is you are kind of funneled in a certain direction. Now, while it may not be this obvious, there's always a reason how and why you end up in the place that you end up in. And that's what this portrays when they talk about building a society. There has to be people to take care of the society, to control the society, to then enforce it and then have it all come full circle. An oversupply of teachers putting a strain on the literary drive. Activating playwright converter. Nice work, honey. Okay, the therapists are getting bored. We need to increase their supply of incest porn. 20% wasn't enough. What? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, hell no. All right. Uh, for those of you who have never seen Rick and Morty, yeah, yeah, it's, it can get a little uh, spicy at times. But again, you see how all these things are kind of tied together, and this is supposed to show the satire? It's supposed to show you? Wait a minute. How, how do things turn out the way they do? How is this... This people want to say that it's a conspiracy theory. You can't control everything. Well, I'm not saying the government controls everything. That would be quite a stretch. What I am saying is you don't have to control it. You can influence. You don't need to direct because it would be too obvious then. Why have to push someone by instead of, when you could lead them by a shadow? And it, it goes to show you. How you started down one path and you ended up on another one because of something that happened to you. All these things are tied into what makes a society a society and a civilization a civilization and how things change and how things are adjusted. And they'll go into another interesting idea that we are seeing play out in society today that ties into this idea of the Matrix. Thinking that, oh, the Matrix, it's, it, it, it's a conspiracy, it's not real, it's so laughable. Well, it all calls down to the system. What is the system? What benefits the system? And the system is based upon utilitarianism. What benefits the common good? The, mo the most benefit for the most people. Let's keep going in this clip. What the hell is that? The unproductives. God damn it, how are there so many of them? Unproductives? Yeah, DJs, foodies, influencers. I just recirculate them through until... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's reprehensible. Did you hear that? The unproductives, in other words, <laughs> they probably classify me as an unproductive, even though I would argue I do a lot more for society than a, a lot of other people do. But you know what? That's okay. We don't need to argue the schematics of it. But what's interesting is it's the unproductives. But the, the unproductives are an interesting breed because when you break it down, the unproductives are people who are outside the mold. They're different. They're not what you would consider normal. They're people who are making their own way, people who are taking risks in life. And a lot of people might call them crazy for it. But then there are some of us who realize that there is risk and we say, all right, you might not do it, but... Fine. I'll do it myself. Gotta take the Thanos approach, right? It's interesting, huh? But again, there are unproductives. There are people who are, quote, unproductives, but then people who are on the dole, people who are on government assistance and all that. And there's a real problem on how do you deal with those people because if they're not taken care of properly, it can lead to a rebuttal against the system and the system can get overthrown conceivably. I'm not saying it should, it shouldn't, but I'm saying it's very interesting when you talk about that and you bring up that idea and that's why the system is designed to take care of itself and designed to benefit the collective good because as long as the majority agrees with the system and benefits from it to some capacity, then it works. And that's why they incentivize security with the flock, with the herd, and not individualism and freedom by being a rogue. It's very interesting, and that's why people argue we are in the Matrix. 
because you might be living in the matrix because you live in the system and you have no desire to get out of the system or you don't even realize you are in the system or a cog in a giant machine. You may not like that analogy, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. In fact, it implies that because you don't like something, that's striking a raw nerve in your system. And maybe you can ask yourself hard questions, to which point you could say, hey, yeah, I like my life. I'm cool with it. Or say, you know what? No, I want to go a different direction. But only you can make that choice. So let's get back to building of a civilization, shall we? Let's see what else they have to say. Right? I'm really curious to see what happens next. And what... They blew a hole in the human resources department. You're fired. Yes, Resources. Oh man. Yeah, we gotta fix this, Dad. We can't keep recycling them through. I can add an online uh, college workaround. Or just push them out through a pipe in the back. Same, Same thing. thing. Oh, online college. Oh, Rick. You're reprehensible out here. Oh man. But again, it ties in this idea of there's always a way around. So, where there's a will, there's a way, and society always has a way of winning. Because the system is designed for the rich and the powerful to win and for the people who are, work for them to do okay to average and then the people at the bottom to just suffer and wither, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. That is Darwin. That's Darwinianism. That's natural selection. Now, that, again, the system is not good or evil. It is necessary and unavoidable because when people come together, that is a merging, a convergence of wills which then leads to whose will is superior to someone else's, and then before you know it, you don't know what's going on, and then you have to make compromises. And compromise is what builds society and then pushes towards mediocrity, because then you are compromising yourself. In the military, compromise, being compromised means you are basically unreliable. You are, you're out of, the, you're out of commission. You're unreliable. And so it's interesting when he talks about this, like, is then there's always a way to work around it. There's always another way society can find a way to build itself back up at your expense, most likely. At the expense of the individual, the collective thrives. Well, let's keep going. These kids may not be mine, but you definitely are. Look at you, my little steampunk overlord. And that's the end of it. So it's, again, it's interesting when you look at People want to say that, oh, the Matrix is not possible, it's, well, civilization doesn't operate that way. Well, then how does civilization operate? Well, do we want to look at philosophers? Well, we can do that. Let's look at it. According to homework.studies.com, which I'm sure that there are multiple other people who also would say this, but the purpose of civilization is to civilize members of society. In other words, it's meant to bring down the uh, the individualism to prop up the communal it's meant to provide security at the expense of individual freedom now the founders of america tried to bring these two together as best they could the problem is it's like oil and water you can pour the two in but eventually we're going to see that separation it's unavoidable so let's go down here says, the point of civilization is to be civilized. The, point, the purpose of action is to, be, is to perpetuate society, for only in society can philosophy truly take place. Eh, I don't know about all that. I don't necessarily agree with that. This philosophy may also view civilization as a dynamic exchange between three entities, human nature, values, and environment. Civilization is a cultural type or a way of life that is characterized by a common system of beliefs or a mode of thinking. What we were just talking about, the system. That is what people talk about when they talk about the matrix. You know, it's easy to think about it in some 3D, like, civil, simulation type of a thing. You can think about it in those terms if it helps you conceptualize what we're talking about. But it all comes down to civilization is represented by certain values, by certain um, aspirations and insights and all this kind of stuff because it benefits the collective good, not necessarily the individual good. 
And like I said, that's neither good nor evil. It's just unavoidable and necessary for most people because not everybody can be independent. Not everybody has the ability to be self-sufficient or the desire, much less the ability. So then we have to have this hard conversation of, do you live technically in the matrix? Well, I don't know if you live in a simulation like in the movie, but do you live in a system that is designed to suppress your freedom to provide you with security? Yes, you do. You do. And it's up to you as to whether you want to be secure or you want to be free. Because in my opinion, people are only happy when they are free. And the only way for them to be free is to have courage. The courage to step away. The courage to not just be secure and comfortable and conform. But the desire to say, I'm going to take that leap. I'm going to take that risk. I am not going to be on the defensive. I'm going to be on the offensive and I'm going to come out here and blaze my own trail, not just follow one someone else has done. That takes guts. It's hard to do. A lot of people probably going to think you're crazy. But that's okay. Because guess what? As the Cheshire Cat said in Alice in Wonderland, most everyone's mad here. And at the end of the day, you have to make the choice of what are you going to be allowed to live with? What choices can you live with and which ones can you not? And once you answer that question for yourself, the path will become a little clearer for you. And it is my desire that you actualize all the goals that you have. Just know that freedom is many things, but it is far from free. My friends, you need to answer this question for yourselves of do you live in the matrix or are you going to allow yourself to step away, have the courage and the capacity to blaze your own trail? Do you have it? Some of you might not. Okay. If that is what you desire, then that is your choice. But just know there are some of us like myself, we're not going to do that. We won't conform. We are the independents. We are paying the price for freedom every day. But at the end of the day, it is only through staying vigilant, informed, and questioning everything that comes your way that you can even begin to become free. Because breaking your chains for is the easy part. It's what happens up here that's the hardest. My friends, I hope you came away with some valuable questions today. I really hope that you decide what you want to do for yourself because only you can answer these questions for yourself on your desire and your on your way to building your own personal philosophy. You take care of yourselves. I'm out of here. Peace.